Good evening. Thanks for joining us on India Business Hour. I'm Shireen Bhan. The headlines we're tracking for you tonight. A tech outage leads to the grounding of all flights in the U.S. for nearly three hours earlier today. Over 3,700 flights were delayed. Over 100 flights cancelled as a result. The White House ruled out a cyber attack at this point, but the cause of the snag not yet known. The world is perilously close to a recession, says the World Bank hands a sharp cut to its global growth forecast in 2023 from 3% earlier to 1.7%, expects India's GDP growth to slow to 6.9% and projects a 6.6% growth rate for FY24. Electric vehicles hog the limelight as the auto expo returns after three years. Tata Motor shows off 12 cars, including five electric models, also showcases 14 trucks including ones powered by hydrogen fuel cells. Group Chairman N. Chandrasekharan and Noel Tata are in attendance. Maruti Suzuki unveils its electric SUV concept set to hit the market in 2025, also launches a new Wagonar with flex fuel engine. 75 new models set to be showcased by 48 automakers this week. Oil prices fall amidst an unexpected build-up in U.S. inventories. Public sector oil marketing companies hope for a 50,000 crore rupee cash compensation from the government in FY23 on the fuel price freeze. That's a CNBC TV 18 exclusive. NRIs without an Indian mobile number may soon be able to use UPI for transactions as well. The NPCI asks companies to ensure the system is ready by April. The facility will initially be rolled out for NRIs in 10 countries including the US, UK, Saudi Arabia, UAE and Australia. The Supreme Court agrees to hear Google's plea against the competition regulator's 1,337 crore rupee penalty order after the NCLAT refused an interim stay. The regulator had fined Google for abusing its dominant market position in the Android phone market. The company law appellate tribunal also turns down another petition by Google challenging a separate CCI order. Relief for Johnson & Johnson, the Bombay High Court quashes Maharashtra's drug regulator order suspending the company's license to manufacture baby powder. The High Court calls the state action arbitrary and unreasonable. Angry protesters halt the demolition of two hotels marked unsafe in Uttarakhand's Joshi Mat. Chief Minister promises 1.5 lakh rupees as aid to affected families who are being moved to safer locations. Footwear makers VAT for lower duties on raw materials, production-linked incentives, interest subvention, among others. This upcoming budget scene, BC TV 18, gets you the industry wish list from the country's footwear manufacturing hub, hub of Agra. Natu Natu, our... This is the first nomination and first win for this writing team. They win their Golden Globe tonight for their music and lyrics of Natu Natu in RRR. Accepting the award is... Well, it is a moment of triumph for Indian cinema at the Golden Globe Awards. RRR has won top honours in the Best Original Song category, resulting in Indian cinema's first Golden Globe. A.R. Rahman has won the Golden Globe twice before, once for Slumdog Millionaire and once for 127 Hours, but both were considered British films. We will take a closer look at RRR's moment of Golden Globe glory. That's coming up for you on India Business Hour. Well, from the Golden Globe action to the market action of the day, a range-bound session saw Indian equities end the day flat with a slight negative bias. Mid-caps underperformed the benchmarks, closing a quarter of a percent lower. However, banks were the star performers of the day. That index soared half a percent. Metals leading from the front, while pharma stocks were a bit of a drag. That was the equity market action. But on to the currency market. The rupee continues to gain ground against the dollar, this after depreciating by 10% against the greenback in 2022. The domestic currency closing at 81 57 to the dollar, clocking its biggest single-day gain in two months. This has been driven largely by the dollar weakening globally, a trend that has held sway since the start of 2023. This is helping emerging market currencies across the world, including the Indian rupee. And on to the big global story tonight. All domestic flights in the United States were grounded for over three hours earlier this evening following a widespread tech outage. The U.S. Federal Aviation Administration system that alerts pilots and other flight personnel about hazards or any changes was not processing updated information. Over 3,700 flights were delayed and over 100 flights were cancelled as a result. However, flights that were already in the air were allowed to continue on course. In a statement, the White House has said that while there is no evidence of a cyber attack at this point, President Biden has ordered a full investigation into the causes of the outage. Resumption of operations began gradually 
after a three-hour halt led by the airports at Newark and Atlanta, which are the most congested. The World Bank has warned of a global recession and cut the GDP growth outlook for India. The World Bank expects India's economy to grow at 6.9% in FY23. It has projected a growth rate of 6.6% for FY24. The bank expects global growth to slow down sharply to 1.7% in 2023 from its earlier projection of 3%. This will be the third weakest annual pace of growth for the world economy in the last three decades. The World Bank has also warned that the globe is perilously close to a recession. Now, after a three-year hiatus due to the pandemic, India's biggest auto show is back. The Auto Expo kicking off in the capital. The theme this year is sustainable mobility. Big players like Malti Suzuki, Hyundai, MG Motor, Ashok Leyland and EV players unveiled a range of new offerings. Tata Sun's chairman N. Chandrasekhar and Noel Tata, chairman of Trent International, were present at the Tata Motors showcasing its EV offerings. We get you all the action from day one of the Auto Expo. But first, the big CNBC TV18 exclusive interview this evening with Tata Sun's chairman N. Chandrasekharan on Tata Motors' growth path on the Air India show cause notice that has been issued by the DGCA and more. My colleague Parikshit Lutra in conversation with the Tata Sun's chief. Uh, Mr. Chandrasekharan, very strong show by uh, Tata Motors here at the Auto Expo. 26 products unveiled across segments. Give us a sense, what does this show about Tata Motors' growth roadmap? Today, you're a strong number three, growing in a robust manner. How do you see growth from here? I think uh, both in um, commercial vehicles and passenger cars, uh, we are driving towards uh, new mobility. And we're investing in a number of technologies. Uh, you've seen us uh, launch a number of electric vehicle um, passenger cars. And also you're seeing the same thing in commercial vehicles. Um, you got to see what we're doing in the fuel cells and uh, hydrogen uh, powered uh, internal combustion engine vehicles. Uh, we are looking at urban mobility as well as uh, long distance trucking mm -hmm. as far as the commercial vehicle is concerned. As far as the um, passenger car is concerned, I think we are investing both in ICE technology as well as in um, electric vehicles. See, we had a uh, lot of product gaps which we have been trying to uh, address. So it's a question of uh, focusing on safety. It's a question of uh, taking a bet on electric mobility. That's a bet we took in uh, uh, 2018, late 18 and 19. And since then, um, we have only doubled and tripled our efforts. Mm. So uh, we are committed. Mm. We are also wanting to create cars which are very desirable for the consumer. Mm. Um, we have to work on both affordability and on uh, driving pleasure. Um, and on technology. On technology is something that will continue to invest. So electric vehicles, how uh, you have come up with a 10, a SEP 10, 10 lakh electric vehicle car. How will you continue focusing on bringing down costs and any challenges to electric mobility that you see in the country, which uh, probably need to be done away with? I think we need to do all ranges. It's not only about uh, a price range at uh, 10 lakhs. Mm. We also have to have higher end models because customers have different choices. There are different segments of customers. So <clears throat> we need to continue to uh, uh, work on uh, batteries and need to work on uh, uh, new technologies. Currently we are with uh, lithium ion and we need to look at other technologies as well. Mm -hmm. So we are uh, working with, uh, let me put it this way, startups and other innovators. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think this space will evolve. Mm. It's uh, too difficult to say exactly um, at what time frame and uh, when we will be launching uh, different technologies, but we'll continue to evolve. Does uh, Tata Motors have a clear path to the number one position in the market? I mean, we don't uh, talk about uh, position and market share. Our job now, we have a long way to go. Our job is now to um, continue to produce vehicles um, which are appreciated by customers mm. and uh, adopted by customers. Any so view? We've got, a, we've got a long way to go. All right. So just one final comment on Air India. An unfortunate incident. You've already taken action. Anything that you'd like to tell us? No, I've already uh, said that uh, as a company and as a group, um, we uh, fell short. 
um, in responding to that situation. So we are committed to making um, steps, uh, whether it is in terms of processes, in terms of uh, other systems, and uh, that we need to correct so that we can handle the situations much better. And more importantly, um, we can uh, ensure that the customers feel uh, delighted to be with uh, our airlines. The Auto Expo, the Indian Motor Show, is making a return after a gap of three years. And the focus clearly is on clean mobility. Tata Motors had some big announcements here at the Auto Expo. They unveiled 26 vehicles across electric vehicle, the IC range in passenger vehicles and commercial vehicles as well. We are confident that we chose the right strategy. And I truly believe that the transition to electric mobility in India will happen much faster than what we have imagined. Maruti Suzuki had some announcements as well. They unveiled the EVX, which will be the first electric vehicle that will be brought to India by Maruti Suzuki in collaboration with Suzuki Motor Company in 2025. Even before that, we also saw a prototype of a flex fuel vehicle in a Wagonar form. The DCO parity, which is the basis of uh, you know calculation consumer makes for making uh, choices, uh, is uh, more in favor of larger vehicles and smaller vehicles. You've got this uh, Wagonar also, which is parked here, and there's something special about it. It's not your conventional petrol or diesel Wagonar. It is a flex fuel vehicle. So what is a flex fuel vehicle? A flex fuel one, which can run on higher ethanol blends. So this prototype that Maruti Suzuki is showcasing has been developed specifically for the India market. It has been developed by Maruti and Suzuki in collaboration with each other. It is being tested in India. It has a whole new engine and there are significant upgrades which have been made to this vehicle. I also visited uh, the booth of Ashok Leyland. They had at least seven vehicles showcased here at the Auto Expo. They had LNG vehicles, a hydrogen fuel cell truck, uh, a CNG truck and uh, they also had an electric vehicle truck as well. because the future is going to be different and therefore we want to be prepared for the future. And that is our play at the Auto Expo as well. We have nothing uh, from diesel or old fuel here. Everything is uh, future. One of the latest entrants in India's crowded car market, Kia Motor today showcased two of its vehicles. The first one is the Kia Concept EV9. The second car the company has showcased is the KA4. Well, the KA4 is a luxury MPV and it is expected that uh, whenever uh, this car is launched in India, it will replace the existing uh, Kia Carnival. The concept is basically to take feedback from the consumers, how they really like the product, what kind of uh, features they would like to have in this product. So, you know, Auto Expo gives us a platform where we can really, uh, you know, talk to our consumers and understand more of their needs and uh, what, they, what they feel about the products. So we are still uh, under exploratory stage at this point in time. We'll get you another broadcast tomorrow with launches from Tata Motors. Remember, the Jimny from Maruti Suzuki, the Fronks are also going to be launched tomorrow. Important launches to watch out for. Well, that's all the action from the Auto Expo on day one. Our team will bring you 
the latest launches on day two too. Non-resident Indians will soon be able to use UPI to make payments with international mobile numbers. National Payments Corporation of India, the NPCI, has asked players in the UPI ecosystem to ensure the system's readiness by April end to get this going. Ritu joins us now to explain how this will work. Ritu, we've been flooded with queries and questions from our viewers. Uh, this finally will go online by April, but uh, take us through what this means. That's right, non-resident Indians which have bank accounts in India no longer really need to have a local Indian mobile number to be able to transact using the UPI. And this is because NPCI, which is the governing body for the Unified Payments Interface in India, has allowed NRIs to make UPI payments using their international mobile numbers from their NRE or NRO accounts, which are the two major categories of accounts which are available for NRIs currently. NRE is the non-residential external account where NRIs can park their foreign currency earnings. And NRO, which is a non-resident ordinary account where they can manage their income earned in India. Now, to begin with, NPCI is going to enable these transactions for NRIs in 10 countries, and that includes Singapore, Australia, Canada, Hong Kong, Oman, Qatar, the United States, Saudi Arabia, UAE, and the United Kingdom. But subsequently, it plans to extend the facility to more countries in the near future. Now, NPCI has asked players in the UPI ecosystem, which is primarily banks, to onboard customers from these countries and ensure that these accounts are compliant with FEMA and other RBI regulations and have necessary uh, anti-money laundering checks, etc. in place by the 30th of April this year. Now, UPI, as we know, has uh, been one of India's biggest success stories in the field of payments, and it is slowly expanding beyond the Indian shores. Uh, it recently announced that Indian travelers visiting Europe could transact using the UPI. It is also exploring partnerships to cover more countries uh, by and by, and with this latest move, NPCI gets a further push in the the global market. Congratulations to the team at RRR. And time for us to head into a break, but up next, angry protests halt the demolition of two hotels marked unsafe in Uttarakhand's Joshi Mutt. A ground report when we return. Well, the big national story that we continue to track, more than 700 houses in Uttarakhand's Joshi Mutt have developed cracks due to land subsidence. As the evacuation continues, the Uttarakhand government has announced an interim relief of 1.5 lakh rupees each for the affected families who've been moved to safer locations. The state administration has said that initially 200 unsafe houses and some hotels will be demolished. Two hotels were marked for demolition on Tuesday, but the authorities couldn't dismantle as hotel owners and local stage protests. The protesters were demanding fair compensation from the government. CNBC TV 18 Santegora also travelled to Sunil village of Joshi Mutt and spoke with the residents of the first house where the cracks were noticed. Here's her report. This is the Shaklani family home a place where generations of the Shaklani family have lived. It has wide cracks in it now, and it's caving in. This is the house from the top of the region where wide cracks were first noticed. All 14 members of the family have shifted to a nearby hotel now, and the Shaklanis can sense that this is the beginning of uncertain times for them. This is the condition of Shaklani family's house. Now, let's talk to some members of the family to understand that uh, when was the first time they noticed these cracks and what has happened since then. Thank you very much for talking to us. Can you explain to me that when did the first time you saw these little cracks, when did the big cracks, and what happened? Can you explain to me? I was talking about it first. When did the cracks happen? That time, this is the first time I was talking about it. It was the first time I was talking about it. That time, there were cracks. We thought that the land was taking the land. But after that, I was talking about it a week ago. I'm telling you about it three weeks ago. उसमें ये दीवार दिन प्रतिदिन और चौड़ी होती गई। आज एक दीवार पे देखा, कल दूसरी और परसों तीसरी। तो धीरे-धीरे करके दीवारों पे दरारें भी पड़ती गईं और मकान दरारें चौड़ी भी होती गईं। लगभग कितने now, various teams of the union government and state administration visit Shaklani residents on a daily basis. These teams are conducting surveys and trying to establish the causes of this land subsidence, these wide cracks and this caved-in surface. 
आप लोगों का फोकस पॉइंट क्या है सर व्हेन यू आर यू नो कंडक्टिंग दिस रेकी फोकस पॉइंट है ये बेसिकली रिहेबिलिटेशन तीन पॉइंट्स हैं हमारे मैंडेट में जो लोग हैं उनके रिहेबिलिटेशन का क्या अरेंजमेंट होगा और अभी इमीडिएट क्या उनकी नीड्स हैं उनको कैसे एड्रेस किया जाएगा दूसरा इसके जो प्रोबेबल कॉजेज हैं उसके बारे में हम लोग जानने की कोशिश करेंगे क्योंकि डिटेल्ड इन्वेस्टिगेशन इन सब में तो टाइम लगेगा तो प्रोबेबल कॉजेज हैं और फर्दर कोर्स ऑफ एक्शन क्या होगा Shaklani family in the meantime is waiting for the authorities to walk the talk and help them. This is one of the rooms of Shaklani family and this is one of the worst affected house in the region. All 14 members of Shaklani family are shifted to a nearby hotel but they claim that the rehabilitation is poorly planned and because of that despite the dangerous status of their house and the risk involved they still have to come here multiple times a day. हमें यहाँ पर खाना बनाने के लिए आना पड़ता है वहाँ पर खाने बनाने के लिए जगह नहीं है हालांकि उन्होंने हमको ऐसे बोला है कि वहाँ पर तुमको खाना बना बनाया मिलेगा पर हमको पापा और मेरे खाते नहीं है तो इसलिए हमको यहाँ पर बनाने के लिए आना पड़ता है बट द लोकल एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन क्लेम्स दैट द इफेक्टेड फैमिलीज आर प्रॉपरली रिहेबिलिटेटेड वाइल मिनिस्टर्स एंड गवर्नमेंट ऑफिसर्स विजिट द शाकलानी फैमिली होम एंड मैनी अदर्स लाइक इट दे प्रोवाइड अश्योरेंसेज बट लाइक द शाकलानीज थाउजेंड्स ऑफ रेसिडेंट्स ऑफ जोशी मठ are facing an uncertain future or hundreds of impacted families looking for safe options to move to now the government is considering a 2600 crore rupee production linked incentive scheme to encourage footwear manufacturing in the country the sector which lost 30% of sales volumes due to the pandemic is now showing green shoots but can the indian footwear industry rise in the face of global competition especially china which is an 85% share of the global footwear market my colleague abhimanyu sharma travels to agra which is the biggest hub for footwear manufacturing in india with a turnover of at least 20000 rupees to find out what the budget wish list is of the sector If you recently bought shoes from Steve Madden, Dunes, Zara or Mango, it is quite possible that your footwear was manufactured in the city of Agra. Identified worldwide by the iconic Taj Mahal, Agra is also known for its vibrant footwear industry. Footwear from this city is a desired commodity not just across India but is also exported to over a dozen advanced nations. However, the leather industry in Agra is grappling with its own set of issues and is seeking several policy interventions to augment its export potential. The city has a flourishing footwear industry which supports at least 40% of the city's population and employs 400,000 people directly. There are at least 50 large units, 150 MSMEs and 5,000 micro units. The domestic turnover is approximately rupees 20,000 crores and exports are worth rupees 4,000 crores. But India's footwear exports are minuscule compared to China's 85% share in the global footwear industry and that's why businessmen here in Agra are hoping for incentives and concessions in the upcoming budget. So all the import substitutes to be produced in India the PLI is really important the capital cost in india is a key when you really want to scale up we can't grow at 8 to 10% of the interest rate we don't need any cash subsidies but interest subvention for minimum for the next 5 years minimum 5% interest subvention raw material should be on the either on the zero duty or the max on the uh, 10% duty 10% of the of uh, those taxes may should be invested in our social security Industrialists here say that a reduction in GST is necessary to drive sales of made in India footwear against Chinese imports. Would recommend that the government brings down the GST on footwear from 18% to 5% so that we get a level playing field and we don't allow the Chinese imports into India. If we have the funds we can really face the competition. If funds are expensive then it becomes difficult. China today has 86% of the world market of shoes and we are about around 3%. If we get even 10% from China it will be a huge jump. Agra's footwear industry hopes the budget would reduce duties on imported raw materials and provide for higher rates for remission of duties. A concessional import of raw material, machinery, and also technology 
so that India can make world class product. We need to rationalize and standardize a lot of government procedures so that there's ease of business for all exporters. Footwear should attract higher road tap. There's a flaw in classification, which in turn results in loss of road tap. It usually attracts 1.3, but we sometimes get one, so it's a 0.3% loss of uh, road tap. The recent FDA with the UAE led to a 64% jump in leather exports to the West Asian country in November. While the government wants the leather industry to explore newer territories, the industry wants social security, interest subvention, lower duty on raw material and a PLI scheme from the upcoming union budget. In Agra with video journalist Rajendra, this is Abhimanyu Sharma for CNBC TV18. Well, the budget countdown has begun and uh, sectors like the footwear industry hoping that there will be more measures announced in Budget 2023 to alleviate the pain and further growth. With that, it is time for us to wrap up this edition of India Business Hour. Thanks very much for watching. Stay tuned. The news continues here on CNBC TV 18.